Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I know this is our third hour, third lecture together. Hope you're not getting bored hearing the same voice for three hours. <laughs> um, I know people are still connecting to the class. Okay. All right. So, welcome to BC 205 Keys to Supernatural Ministry class. And good morning, everyone. Let's just begin with the prayer. Now, I have started the uh, re sorry, the recording of this class. So everything here is going to be recorded and uh, students can listen to it uh, both in the Google Classroom and also in our e-learning portal. Right, so let's pray. Let's get started. Um, <clears throat> somebody could lead us in prayer um, and we'll get started. Anybody, please? Okay. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory because you are a great God. We thank you for another time. We thank you for another moment to study your word. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you open our minds and you open our ears to understand and to hear what you want to say to us this morning, this afternoon, this evening. We ask, O oh God, that the servant that you have prepared in order to teach us this day, that you will fill him, God, with words you know, from the throne of grace. As we hear your word, may we hear to life, you know, may we hear with God to win souls, you know, may we hear with God to supernatural greatness. We thank you that at the end of this class, all glory and honor be ascribed unto you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Harrison. Thank you. All right. Welcome again, everyone, to this course on uh, keys to supernatural ministry. I have um, uh, made the, the uh, course overview, the course uh, overview of the course available to us in the uh, class work section. I'm just going to review that. So let me just take a moment to share my screen and we will look at that just quickly. We'll look at <clears throat> the course overview. So what are we trying to do in this course? What is the journey we're going to make? So uh, this keys to supernatural ministry be you know, uh, one of the things we do in the Bible college regularly is to uh, re take a look at our curriculum and see, you know, what needs to be changed, what needs to be upgraded, uh, other areas that we want to, you know, we feel that we're not addressing. Uh, the whole goal is to equip people for ministry and other areas that we need to uh, address. And so I think maybe two, maybe three years ago, Oh, yeah, just recently, uh, we introduced this course, Keys to Supernatural Ministry. The idea was, uh, one is we wanted to place the emphasis on the supernatural as we journey through the through three years of learning. But uh, we also wanted something that will bring together different things that we are learning uh, and, and show us how to put them together in order to manifest supernatural ministry. So, you know, in the first year, you would have learned about prayer and intercession. You would have learned about believers' authority, about uh, and our identity in Christ. And, uh, and uh, then you learn about, uh, in second year, as you continue on, you're learning about healing and deliverance. You're learning on the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. You're learning about inner wholeness. And so we are learning on all of these different themes or topics. Uh, but then how do we 
bring them all together in order to see the supernatural being released through us. So we felt that was lacking. You know, as we saw students going through the college, uh, we felt that, yeah, we're giving them all this, but we're not showing them, hey, how do you bring all this together uh, in your life, in your ministry, in a practical way, as you're ministering to people, whether you're doing it one-on-one or whether you're doing it in a congregational setting or in a small group setting. And how do you bring all this together? So that's why we felt the need to introduce this course. It's only once a week. uh, But the goal is to show us how to bring all these things that we are learning uh, uh, and and how to just practically use them or apply them in order to see the manifestations of healings and miracles and uh, so on. So it's more of a very practical course, uh, bringing truths together and how do you use it in order to minister to people. So we want to emphasize uh, on that aspect as we journey through this course. And just to give you a heads up, you know, uh, next semester, next year, as part of this academic year, next semester, again, we're changing our curriculum. Uh, we're introducing two new courses. Uh, one is on an entire course on holiness uh, that'll happen next. You know, you will be the first batch that will go through that course on holiness. And there's also a new course we're introducing next semester on developing the human spirit. Again, it's a new course, and you will be the first batch going through that course next semester. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we, we, we are constantly introducing something new, uh, but we don't want to lose the content. So the courses that these are replacing, that content is already, you know, is being moved into other courses. Uh, so we're not losing overall content. We're just enriching what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we're we are addressing areas where we feel like, you know, we really need to develop people in these areas. So um, uh, so that's happening this academic year. And, uh, you know, you're going to be the batch, the second year, current second year batch will be the first to experience those courses. Anyway, uh, so just an overview of what we're going to cover in, 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 in the course. The way we've structured this course is uh, we look at, you know, four sections. Uh, the first has to, to do with the possibility. Again, just to awaken our understanding that the supernatural is uh, something that is to be natural in our lives. The possibility you now for us to walk in that, expect that, desire that, uh, you know, and that it should just be normal for every believer um, to uh, to manifest signs, wonders, miracles, to manifest the supernatural. In section two, we're going to talk about the keys. That means there are keys. Uh, God has shown us in his word that, look, this is how, you know, you can make the spiritual impact the natural. So where the spiritual impacts the natural, we call it supernatural. Right? But it's what it's it's just normal of the spiritual Im- impacting the natural. Right? So what are the keys that I can use or I can you know exercise to cause the spiritual to affect the natural? And when that happens, supernatural takes place. So we're going to talk go through those keys. And uh, these would be things that you already are aware of. Because you know these are truths you have studied or you will be studying in the second year, um, so these are truths that you are aware of. But then, what we need to do is we need to bring it into okay. How do I use it? How do I make it happen in my life? Right. So that's section two, and then in section three, uh, we want to talk about personal preparation. You know, what can I do personally to be a vessel that God works through supernaturally? Uh, because there are, we see in scripture, there are certain things God tells us to do uh, to position ourselves as vessels, or if you want to use the word channels, you know, that we can be instruments um, through which the supernatural manifests. So there are things that we can do, you know, and uh, we uh, we should believe God to do that. And lastly, uh, there is the pursuit. That means we are on a journey. The church hasn't reached its full state. <clears throat> so we are all part of the church and we are moving from glory to glory. Uh, there are greater levels of glory. There are greater works that we must move into. So how do we keep on in this journey? You know, the journey is not going to be easy. 
we will face some setbacks, we will experience some hardships or delays and things like that, but we must continue on the journey. And so that section four is just to give us a little, uh, uh, you know, a little encouragement to keep on this journey and don't quit just because we don't see things happen immediately. Um, the, uh, the assessments will be simple. We'll just have three simple assessments as we go along based on things we are learning. Uh, you're all aware of uh, the grading scheme. Uh, we will give you the notes as we go along. We will uh, write it out, and post it on the, the course classwork section. And uh, we will reference some of our other books that you're familiar with, The Gifts of the Holy Spirit, Ministering Healing and Deliverance. You know, we will reference some of the content from those books as we go along, All right? So today, uh, uh, I want to, what I thought was instead of uh, diving straight into the content, I want to just ask some basic questions. Two questions I want us to ask, I want us to discuss. The first question is, why supernatural ministry? And second is, you know, how do we respond to common objections to supernatural ministry? So let me stop sharing. Let me look at all of you. Okay. All right. So question. And so before we kind of dive into this whole content and just start talking about practical things on, you know, on keys to the supernatural. First question, and, and this is just open. You know, this is for all of us to discuss, right? Uh, you know, why should you and I today, you know, living in 21st century when people are planning to, you know, go and live on the moon or live on Mars? And, uh, you know, we are doing space excursions, you know, get on the spaceship for 10, 15 minutes and pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. and Whatever, you know. So we are living in this time and age when things, you know, are so advanced uh, in technology and science and so many fields. Uh, we have all these resources available. We have all this knowledge available to us. And here we are talking about supernatural. I mean, some people think we're crazy. I mean, what's wrong with you? You're, you know, don't you, aren't you aware of the times in which you're living in? Uh, why should we even discuss this? Why should we even, you know, especially the church? You know, I'm not talking just about us as individuals. So as a church, as a body of believers, why should we, you know, be equipped in the supernatural? Why the supernatural? I want to just hear... You know, just feel free to share your thoughts. Today is just going to be some discussion, so we orient our minds uh, towards uh, what we are going to be studying. So why the supernatural? What are your thoughts? Samuel, you put your hand up. Hi, right, Pastor. Um, it, um, so I think the immediate answer that I can think of is from a previous class that we were doing, which is uh, um, um, apologia or um, our defense of our faith uh, and our explanation of our faith backed up with works uh, so not just words uh, not just empty reasoning but um, the signs wonders and miracles uh, because where reasoning stops uh, working uh, is where our uh, signs wonders and miracles will uh, will do the will do our apology so that's one thing that i think yeah so to present a defense of the gospel not just in word but also in works and the power of God. I see other things in the chat. So Bridget says, uh, to manifest God's glory, so people, people will know him for who he is. I see Rose comment, um, to demonstrate the kingdom of God so that you know, God can do you know, what human technology cannot do. Only the supernatural intervention of God can do it. Uh, Siddhant has shared uh, <clears throat> the power of God is above everything and we need power to make a change so that you know i guess you're saying that god's power is much greater than everything and that will bring about a change okay felix is sharing uh, the gospel not only word but demonstrate the power of god yeah so we not only bring the word but we also demonstrate good finish want to say something 
Yes, but uh, um, uh, old and uh, uh, people believed uh, uh, not all listened uh, to God preaching, but uh, uh, when God did a miraculous uh, wonders, uh, people believed. Mm. In this twenty first uh, this century also, uh, likewise, uh, we, we are ahead of uh, diagnosis, robots, uh, many medicines. Um, today, uh, like uh, boys, um, myself, I would consider um, first uh, operation um was successful uh, i started ministering te testing uh, uh, my uh, sharing my testimony and uh, all, all of a sudden uh, my second operation um, during september god uh, allowed me uh, uh, this just for a reason later i know so uh, god uh, all the people poked uh, mocked uh, against um, god ye uh, this uh, god you you said god record uh, you are uh, saying god record in the cancer uh, why did god uh, did uh, again uh, where is god god i told god is does everything for good likewise god gave me a chance um, uh, in the operation uh, to pray while i requested the doctors to pray uh, while the, before uh, performing operation in the operation theater uh, while i was praying finished praying uh, anushisha doctor uh, came to me uh, your um, prayer just comforted me uh, likewise uh, the, you you can um, uh, pray for my family undergoing stress i prayed in the family for uh, children uh, friends uh, family members elders elders i prayed uh, my uh, holy spirit um, uh, told me to pray uh, for the peace and uh, the um, uh, financial uh, crisis uh, they were uh, was, uh, facing i prayed uh, likewise uh, um, uh jesus uh, does good for uh, everything but because mm -hmm. he, the second operation uh, would have uh, had uh, you know all of uh, done for me god uh, even the soul would have given a chance to pray of a doctor Mm. They imagine uh, in their uh, very well into scientific uh, medical, but uh, face uh, the the urge, uh, thirst uh, for God. Mm. So after uh, some time, I met the doctor. Doctor said, uh, "I can't believe uh, now there is peace." And God also um, financially uh, blessed. Uh, could you uh, help me uh, to, to tell me more about uh, your God? That uh, way, I feel um, that uh, that way uh, I uh, got a chance to pray uh, on the medical staffs. Mm -hmm. uh, God was uh, reutilizing me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that uh, 
God may uh, people may walk around, but mm. the God, our living God, testifies. Uh, yeah, even though a second time, but God uh, does for good. Mm. Thank you, Dinesh, for sharing that. That you know, even during your second surgery, uh, God used you to influence to impact the anesthesiologist the doctor was part of the team and that you were able to you know minister to them uh, thank you for sharing and just speak continued healing complete recovery for you and the fulfilling of god's plans for your life and thanks for being part of this uh, bible college attending the classes with us and preparing uh, for the future with expectation thank you for doing that All right so I'm just looking at the comments that have come in here on the chat. So we read Rose's, we read uh, Sudan's, Felix. Um, Salome says, uh, to know God's plan, uh, to know what God's plan is and uh, for him to do his work through us. I wish I the church needs a supernatural. And he does says we call it to multiply and be fruitful. So this, there must be the supernatural because the same spirit that raised Jesus is in us. Avni says, the preaching is not with man's wisdom. That's 1 Corinthians 2, 4, demonstration of spirit and power. Rupa says, bring heaven down to earth. Um, Christ operating in authority through his church. Abraham, the gospel is good news. It's healing the sick. Quite the supernatural. Redeemer shares supernatural display God's manifestation of power Jesus. God's word coming to life. Avni, Matthew 10, 7, 8. Alice exercise authority. Wow, lots of comments here. Uh, one of our says, look, signs and wonders. Yes. Uh, thank you. Amen. And, and, okay. So, all right. So, uh, Beth's question was... Um, uh, Pastor, can I just add in a little bit? Sure, go ahead. Um, but I just feel like uh, the supernatural, the miracles that happen also reveal the nature of God. As much as the power of God is in demonstration, the power of God is in demonstration, uh, uh, like you know, because of the nature of God that He is Almighty and is powerful. But also, it reveals His love for the people and uh, his nature of compassion because we see the miracles what jesus was doing the bible also says that um, he was moved with compassion when he saw those people like when when the widow woman's son was dead and when the when many of the people they were sick and they had come to him for uh, the healing the demonstration of god's power was there but it also the supernatural uh, miracles that took place was revealing his love for them that he was moved with compassion and that he was um, like you know his love was being revealed there and and that he he's also trying to he's also connecting with the people saying that i'm a god not just i'm almighty and powerful but i'm also a god of love i'm a god of compassion I am healer. I'm also provider when we see the miracles where he's looking at the people who are hungry, like, you know, and he does the miracle of multiplying the uh, the bread and the fish. He's He doesn't send them off hungry, mm. but then he feeds them. And in these miracles, as much as we see the power of God in demonstration, we also see the nature of God, that how he is a God of love and a God of compassion, and he really cares for us. And he wants to relate with us. So I feel in the supernatural, this uh, aspect of his nature is also being revealed, Pastor. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So really, the the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the works that God does reveals the nature of God, his compassion, his love, and just various aspects of his nature as provider, healer, deliverer, and so on. So the miracles reveal. So we are answering, or we are discussing, you know, just as an introduction to this course right now, this first hour, uh, we are discussing two questions. One is, the first question which we are discussing right now is why the supernatural, given the time and the day in which we live, why the supernatural, right? So I'm, I'm just looking at all your responses to that. Uh, I see, um, you know, Beth's question there. Why is there this big gap between the theology, what we um, are, you know, theologically and practically, 
And I think the answer to that is, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> that is because the Lord is taking the church from where it is to where it should be, right? So we know, if you look at the history of the church, uh, we know that, um, you know, uh, the church actually went into a dark time period called the Dark Ages for a thousand years. Basically, there was nothing there. So spiritually, the church was dead, not even the basic truth of salvation by grace. And this was just 500 years ago. So in 500 years, the church has come a long way. It's come from being completely spiritually dead to where it is today. So I think amazing things have happened the 500 last 500 years. But then we are not where we should be. We are still on that journey, and God is taking us to that place, you know, where the church will manifest even greater measures of power. But we are on that journey. We're in that trajectory, you know, so to speak. So we are on the right trajectory. We are making the journey, but it is us, this generation, just like Martin Luther did in his day, just to bring a simple, basic truth: uh, salvation by grace. Or then as you journey through the history of the church, you know, different ones stood up in their day and time to take the church a few levels higher in glory where it should be. You know, whether it's just the restoration of the truth of sanctification or the restoration of the truth of divine healing. You know, church didn't even know that divine healing was there, but to bring that truth back to the body of Christ. It was there in the Bible, but the church was so each generation did their part to take the church to the next level of glory. And today you and I here, 500 years from the time of the Reformation, and God is calling you and me to take the church to several levels higher in glory, which he wants the church to be. You know, So Jesus is coming back for a church that is glorious, meaning full of glory. That's the church he's coming back. And you and I have the opportunity to make that journey a little bit more. You know, so... Yes, um, we are here, but we need to go up here. And the way God works is before it happens, always there is truth proclaimed. The truth is proclaimed that this can happen. You know, just like how John the Baptist came saying, the kingdom of heaven is here. So he proclaimed the truth first. Then Jesus came and said, come into the kingdom, right? So that's the journey. First truth has to be proclaimed so that people believe it. And then people make the journey into it, right? So that's the journey we are making. Uh, that's why we do see the truth being proclaimed always higher than the level of the practical experience. It is always that way so that the level of practic practical experience comes up uh, to the level of truth that's being proclaimed. But God is taking us to become a glorious church. And that's exciting to know. And to know that we are here to make that part of our journey happen. Christopher, your question, or you want to comment on that? Yes, um, this is actually in, in answer to that uh, the question of you know why um, supernatural ministry. So I think this is probably a little more of a personal kind of a, uh, in uh, answer. Um, the short answer really for me is that you know. Um, uh, there is a supernatural ministry, uh, or rather, there is sorry, there is there is a supernatural, and um, uh, you know there is there is there is there's good happening there. There's also evil that's happening over there, and uh, it's something that you know uh, uh, one has to uh, you know be aware of, and also you know work within you know within uh, uh, you know the good side of uh, of the supernatural. Um, why I say personal? Because I mean I'm just looking back at you know, um, you know prior to coming back to to uh, prior to co coming to uh, APC Church, uh, I was uh, you know I was I was, I was uh, you know a Catholic, and uh, with my lim limited knowledge of of the Bible, um, I think I uh, my view of the supernatural was really more about you know what you know what the uh, what the evil one uh, you know was doing in the supernatural. And not really sort of focusing on, uh, you know, what I as 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 a as as a Christian could could do in the supernatural, or could uh, you know be able to uh, you know uh, achieve there, and um, uh, um, because it it was a little more focused on you know the 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 evil side of things, I would I was not really recognizing the fact that you know I didn't want to really spend too much time you know thinking about the supernatural. And uh, so, obviously, you know, since coming to the APC Church, I have 
change my my you know my total view of you know uh, of the supernatural and uh, because it is there and because there is you know uh, you know there are things that you know uh, that you know that are that are possible to possible to be done in the supernatural i think uh, it's a, it's a great opportunity for uh, you know all believers to to operate in that in that realm of uh, you know uh, of ministry all right thank you thank you for sharing all right so you know we are discussing uh, thank you for that so what we're trying to answer is um, you know why should we as believers be interested in seeing the manifestation of the supernatural and we've had a lot of people share uh, their responses on the chat and in the call you know that really this is a way for us to reveal god to manifest god to manifest his glory to impact the world of course it also in the process our own needs get met you know when where science and technology cannot help us God steps in, works the supernatural in our lives or in the lives of people we know, and real needs of real people are met. You know, lives are changed, people are healed, people are delivered, uh, situations are transformed. And uh, so all those things which cannot be done naturally begins to happen, right? So, uh, so all of these reasons are, are, are there. Uh, very quickly, I'm not going to explain this, but um, in, uh, you have um, studied, uh, you, I think you are going through, or you would have gone through this book on ministering, healing, and deliverance. And over well, there, we kind of, you know, list out several reasons on why, you know, we must minister in the supernatural. And just look at that very quickly. You know, they reveal the nature, the reality and nature of God. They reveal God's greatness. They demonstrate God's compassion. They have a powerful effect on people, especially the unbelievers. Um, then Jesus himself gave importance to miracles uh, because the kingdom comes with power. The gospel has to be preached with accompanying signs and it encourages us to believe for more of the supernatural. I think all these reasons were mentioned there on the chat. I want to, uh, you know, uh, just go into... Uh, and not the next question that was just for us to discuss, which is, how do we respond to objections to the supernatural, especially from within the church? Uh, this is sad, but true, that not everybody in the church community, and I say church community means you know, church at large, are excited about the supernatural. In fact, uh, when they, you know, they hear us talking about things like keys to the supernatural, and uh, you know that we believe in signs and wonders and uh, and so on, they will raise a lot of objections. You know, uh, they and, and and a lot of accusations and so on. So, uh, how do we? Uh, respond to, I mean, what could be some of these objections and how do we respond to some of these objections, you know, uh, that come to us from within the church community, right? So we're not talking about uh, people from outside the church. You know, we're talking about from within the church community because one of the things that, uh, you know, we are going to learn in this course on the keys to supernatural. I'm, I'm going to share these practical things. Now we are going to learn these practical things. And then uh, as we start doing it, you got to be prepared that not everybody in the church is going to, you know, come along and pat you on the back and say, hey, that's wonderful. Uh, there are going to be some objections you and I are going to face. And so it's better to, you know, just be ready uh, and also be able to give some response in a loving way uh, to these objections. You know, for, for example, I just throw out some questions or maybe, you know, rather than me doing it, uh, you know, what are some of the objections we may face from the church community towards the supernatural? So you and I are going to learn keys to the supernatural. But we're going to face objections. What can we anticipate? What are some of the objections you may have already faced? And how do we respond to it? Let's just discuss that before we go. Okay, go ahead, Samuel. Um, so from the 
church community itself and not even from outside. So um, I have uh, so one strong argument that I've uh, encountered is uh, the supernatural, um, especially the supernatural was during the apostolic times uh, mm-hmm. before we didn't have the Bible in place. Mm-hmm. So um, um, there, there was no Bible, no scriptures. So mm-hmm. then uh, whenever, so Peter, all the apostles, when they were uh, establishing the church, they needed, they needed divine backup. So as to say, they, because they didn't have the word of God. Uh, Otherwise, people would not listen to them. They would not have gatherings. And so that strong movement would not have happened. But mm. now, with, with, with the coming of the word of God, uh, you know, our, our, everything that we do would be from the word of God. And that's all that we need uh, to proclaim or to carry on the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's ceased in, in a way. Signs, wonders and miracles have ceased. Um, and that's why we don't see so many of signs, wonders, and miracles these days, um, as opposed to uh, what has been recorded during the apostolic time. So that's uh, a strong argument that I have faced. True, true. This is a very common objection to the supernatural, and we're talking about this coming from within the church itself. So we're not saying, you know, it's not the non-Christian raising this. It's from within the church. Uh, and and so, how do we respond to this when people say, "Well, we don't need it today. Only the apostles needed it. We have the Bible; it's enough." What kind of a response do we give? Okay. So Rose says, "God is spirit; He's supernatural, and He hasn't changed through time. Right? He's the same. He hasn't changed." And that's a valid response. Your God hasn't changed. I've changed. But the God of the Bible is still the God of today. So there's no indication he lost his power. And there's no indication he lost his nature. He's still the healer. He's still the deliverer. That's very good. What else can we say? Harris, hand up. Is it a question? Or would you want to respond to Samuel? Yeah, I want to respond you know, to the Go discussion. Um, it is very important you know, for us to know who we are in Christ and know what we carry. Because when this objection you know, comes, it is one thing that can throw us off balance. Mm. And I can tell that it's in those moments, it can be very difficult. So when you know the God you serve, it'll be very difficult, you know, from you to drift away you know, from the calling or from your assignment, you know, with God. Mm. And this thing is a practical example that I've experienced, and it is tough you know, because it is very easy for us to discuss about this. But looking at the reality, how do we really deal with it? And one thing I can tell myself right now that I know that I've done is to stay focused, you know, with with by belief, you know, as in the belief, you know, that God has called me into this ministry. God has called me into what I am doing because the devil, you know, will, will throw so many things at you, you know, just to like, you know, knock you off balance or maybe just to distract you, just to confuse you, just to take you off track, you know, from where God is taking you to, but it is very important we know the God we serve, you know, we know what we carry the in, carry in the inside of us and keep keep the focus and believe that no matter what, you know, we are going through, God is in it. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I do say is that give everything time. You know, with time, the truth, you know, will prevail. So mm. as we keep the focus, we give it time mm. and everything will come to pass. Thank you, Harrison, for sharing. Thank you. Right, so um, we have, um, Abraham, you want to respond to the question? No, sir, I have an objection that 
came to me personally. So can I share or I should wait after the response before I come in? Um, okay, maybe you share a question and people can respond to both these objections. Go ahead, share your, what, what, what you have experienced, the objection yeah, so, that you faced. So I think that people believe in technology than the power of God. And um, I had this experience one day that somebody that I was looking up to, and he told me that if somebody is in the city and the person is sick, um, you tell a person to go to the hospital. But those in the villages, because there is no hospitals and other things, we teach them to practice their faith. So I was like, oh, does it mean that when it comes to maybe like teaching people like, oh, maybe when you are sick, exercise your faith, if it does not work, then you go to the hospital. Or maybe miracles is for those in the villages and miracles are not for those in the city. So this is a personal life that I had, personal encounter that I had with my leader. I couldn't respond. I just kept quiet. So I don't know the answer up to now. So it's like people believe in technology than the power of God. So that is my, my own experience I had, Pastor. Mm. So the second objection, I, I think, and I'm, trying to, and I'm trying to rephrase what Abraham said is, um, especially given the times in which we live, of course, we do have medicine. We have hospitals, doctors, technology, et cetera. We're not against using our minds, uh, using our, the knowledge and the resources God has given to us. But then um, how do we also expect the supernatural, right? Uh, how do we balance the two? Uh, uh, or is it just that, is it like, you know, we said, well, we don't need the supernatural because we have the scientific. And I think that we've addressed earlier um, that there are things that the scientific cannot do and we need the supernatural. But uh, how do we balance it? To, how do we have this, hold these two together, the science and the faith, right? We will, and that's, that's, Perhaps out of that, the objection comes and we need to know how to respond to that. So we will, we will talk about that in, the, I think it's in chapter three or four, I forget, science and faith. We will address that in a little greater depth. Um, yeah, so, you know, if, if you want to share responses to this, how do we respond to the first objection, which is, you know, God suddenly stopped doing the supernatural because the Bible came on the scene and the church moved past the apostolic age or the initial years. What can we say? So one is we can say God hasn't changed. Times have changed. Second, we can point to the promises in scripture you know, about believers. Jesus said those who believe will do the works he did. And that's John 14, 12. We know that scripture. Those believe he did, you know, we'll do it. So we, yeah, that's good, Abhishek, yeah. So from the scriptures, we point to this, you know, there is in the scripture that today the Holy Spirit is at work in the church. You know, he's still the same. And uh, the Holy Spirit hasn't left the church. The same Holy Spirit was working in the, through the, you know, in Jerusalem. So the church in Jerusalem is still working today through his church. Times have changed. The same Holy Spirit is working. The gifts of the Spirit are for today. Nowhere in Scripture does it say the gifts of the Spirit have been taken out. You know, So we point to Scriptures to indicate that God is still at work today. right? And that He's coming for a glorious church. If God always, you know, if you look at the, the way God works, He always finishes better than He begins. The beginning is only a start. The ending is much greater. The glory of the latter is always greater than that of the former. So if the church that he's coming back for is a glorious church, it's got to be much more glorious than what we started with in Jerusalem. Right? So we're coming for a church that is going to be even more powerful, uh, manifesting even greater miracles. And so we're journeying into that. Right? Uh, and uh, so... The Bible is important. We're not disregarding the Bible, but we're saying the Bible is telling us the Holy Spirit is still at work, right? And um, in response to what Abraham said, you know, we are not against science. We're not against hospitals. We make use of those resources. We thank God for it. But it's not an option that 
I disregard my faith. Now, you know, when I'm using medicine, I still have faith in God because ultimately healing, my healing will come from God or healing comes from God, right? So whether you're in the city or in the village, we pray, pray the same way. We use the same word. Our faith is in the same God. Now, if you have access to medical care, make use of it. There's nothing wrong with it, but our dependence is on God and on his word. You know, that's the way we approach it. So we don't, you know, we don't say, well, you know, you don't need faith if you're in the city. No, in the city, all the more you need greater faith if you're in the city, because while there is the availability of medicine and all of that, and we can use it, we need to keep our eyes intensely on God and say, God, ultimately you are my healer, not these things. Right? So it takes, maybe I would say it takes greater faith in the city than in the village, uh, because you really have to take your eyes off of the things and look to God uh, in the city. Right. Okay. So today was just, an, you know, just a little discussion to get us going. Uh, but we're going to, when we come back next week in this course, we're going to get into, like I gave the outline, we're going to start off, first of all, by saying the possibility of the supernatural, why every believer can expect the supernatural in and through their life. So we'll cover some things on that. Then we get into talking about the keys to the supernatural. What are the things God has given to us that will cause the spiritual to impact the natural in our world and also when we minister to people. So we look at from look at things from both perspectives. How to have the supernatural work in our lives and also when we minister to people. What are those keys? So use it for yourself and then use it for others. Thirdly, we'll talk about personal preparation. What can I do? to prepare myself to be a channel, uh, an instrument for the supernatural. And lastly, we'll talk about pursuing God for the supernatural. You know, I just want to close with this little testimony. I think we have two minutes here. And um, uh, forgive me if some of you have already heard this testimony, uh, some of you in recent weeks, but, you know, uh, towards end of last year, uh, not last year, last semester in April, uh, you know, we had the second wave hit many parts of the world and hit very hard in India. Uh, uh, very abruptly, we had to, you know, we, we wrapped up the college and, you know, we had to shift focus to take care of people. Um, and there were people within our church community and just all around India, people were affected tremendously, especially the month of May uh, because of the second wave of COVID. And uh, so around that time, actually, it was end of April, May, you know, the big question was, what should we do as a church uh, in response to this? And uh, uh, the early part of May, on the 5th of May, uh, we, I, I felt I should just call for a meeting of uh, pastors in our city, that's Bangalore, and uh, just have an open discussion and know what should pastors, what should the churches do, what should we do to help people in, in the middle of this second COVID wave. So on May 5th, which was a Wednesday, we called for a pastor's meeting. Of course, it was online and uh, about 70 people attended that call, pastors and Christian leaders, so even leaders of Christian organizations. Uh, we attended the call, there was a lot of discussion, you know, uh, people were talking about buying oxygen cylinders or providing oxygen supply for people. A lot, lot of ideas were being thrown around uh, saying, okay, these are things we can do to help people, primarily church people, so on, uh, during this uh, time. Now, uh, so the meeting was over. We did not come to any conclusion. We didn't uh, arrive at a decision. Uh, so, you know, uh, that day, that especially that night, I was praying. I said, God, you know, we need to do something. So there were two questions. What should we do and how should we do it? And so it, it really I kind of kept me awake through the better part of that night, that day, uh, that night, uh, just asking God what to do, how to do it, what to do, how to do it. I know something has to be done, but what to do, how to do it. And uh, a lot of things were going through my mind because one is, you know, we are working with pastors across many churches. Uh, so whatever we do has to be done in a very, you know, honorable way. We shouldn't offend any pastor or any church. So that was one big concern in my mind. 
Uh, secondly, I also knew the challenge. Uh, if we are trying to form something in the city, that will take time because you know I've uh, you know worked in the city with pastors over over the years, and we know that you know if you're trying to put together a forum or an organization, it, that will take months to happen. But we need to act very quickly. People are suffering right that moment, so that was another thing going through our mind, you know, and. Uh, uh, just praying and say, God, I know if we, that is APC as a church, can do it, we can start work right away because we have everything in place. Uh, so that would be the best way to go about it. But how do we do it in an honorable way? You know, we don't want to offend anybody. But that night is praying. And, you know, when I woke up that morning, that's the morning of the 6th of May, everything was very clear. It was almost like I had a very clear plan and how to go about doing it. Uh, the first thing was to email about eight of the leaders, the main leaders, uh, explain to them, these are the six things we are going to do. And uh, we're going to we, uh, ask them for permission for us as a church to execute it on behalf of the body of Christ. That means uh, it's not something we will do in isolation. We will execute the entire thing on behalf of the body of Christ. So I just sent an email to these people and they were very supportive. Everyone came back, just go ahead, you know, these are the six things I explained we're going to do. So then I called the church staff. I, I said, church, we're going to, the staff, we're going to do this, but everybody has to, we have to go into action quickly. Now, you know, we have to work on these things. So the IT team got together, everybody got together. And I also got approval from the trustees and we set aside to start with, uh, in Indian currency, it's 50 lakhs, which is 5 million rupees. We set it aside and we said, we're going to start off with this. And uh, so we got our you know, web, web page up, everything, and we sent out an email. So we got everything ready, the backend system to handle the request, everything. And we launched within, you know, we got approval on 6th by 12th of May, we launched within six days. Over the weekend, people worked. The IT team was working throughout and uh, we launched. And we just sent out an invitation saying, you know, if you have a need, reach out to us. We will do our best to help you in these six areas. And uh, we had only 5 million rupees set aside, you know, but I remember sharing with our team. I said, look, this is, we're believing God that if God multiplied five loaves and two fish, if Jesus multiplied five loaves and two fish to take care of the people in the, Bi in the Bible, he will multiply this money to meet the needs of his people. You know, now in two weeks, we got over 8,000 requests coming from all over India, every state in India, you know, people reached out. And then we did the initial calculation, like, you know, we really needed like about, uh, you know, uh, we call it four crores in India, which is about 40 million rupees, almost. You know, it's like eight times what we had. But I remember sharing with the team, I said, you know, God will multiply five loaves to a fish. And we are going to reach out, we're going to reach out. Uh, we want to send money, but of course we're going to verify the request. You know, we don't want to waste money. We're going to verify everything. And so, uh, you know, so that's how the journey started. And to, you know, we just closed the project on the 28th of July. Uh, we processed the request, verified it. And to just show you, you know, we started the 5 million. We gave away 37.7 million or 3.77 crores in Indian rupees, 37.7 million rupees. We gave away in the last two and a half months to all these people. And it was just amazing, some money, but this money just kept coming. And we were just a conduit to give to people, right? But what I want to highlight is for, for us personally, this is a miracle. Because it, at one point it was very scary. It was scary because we had 8,000 requests. How are we going to process it? And if you do the calculation, you know, I just did a like a 30%, even if 30% of these are genuine requests and we send money, it's going to mean 40 million rupees. We only have 5 million. How are we going to do this? But when you look back at the end of the two and a half months, you know, 37. 0.7 million or 3.77 crores just flowed through us and it reached to the people. So for for me personally, and I sure, I'm sure for the team that worked on this, is a modern day multiplication of five loaves and two fish. 
it just happened in a different way. It wasn't literal loaves and two fish. It was Indian currency, but this was God at work, you know. So uh, it may not seem very spectacular. Everybody was working hard, you know, processing those requests, making the calls, speaking to people all across the country. But for us, it's a miracle. You know, I just look to God and I say, God, I'm just thankful you gave us this opportunity to be a part of this, you know, that we could help more than 1,500 pastors. And, you know, we have the data out. I can't remember the numbers, but, uh, you know, God, you helped us do this and we are grateful. We started with something small. Uh, we started out in faith, but God did the miracle. So does God work financial miracles? Answer is yes. He does it today. He just does it differently. It just looks different, but it's still the God, same God working miracles. Amen. So let's close in prayer and uh, we will uh, meet again next week, continue on this. Sorry for taking a little extra time. Could somebody please close in prayer and we'll dismiss. Okay, the class is very quiet. I will pray. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. And we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to, to come together and to learn about your supernatural way, Lord, the supernatural way you do things, Jesus. Miracle that you're still doing the promise that you promised us and you continue doing the same thing that you did when you were on earth, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, as we, we learn this course, empower past our sheets, Lord, and open our heart, open our mind, and up, make ready our spirit, Lord, to receive what we learn so that we, we may go into the world, Lord, and be ambassadors, Lord, be, be people who not just say, the, say your words, Lord, but also manifest your glory in power so that the whole world might know that you are God and you're still working, you're still the same, you never change. Be with us, Lord, as we, until we meet again. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Amen. Being part of the course and being part of the class today. Um,